Here's some western red cedar from the Pacific coast that's traveled about as far as it can go without leaving the United States. Along with other fine woods, it will be fashioned into that most genuinely American of all watercraft, the canoe. The Old Town Indians would be astounded by the mechanical aids used by the master craftsmen of today in creating a canoe. First, the planking is sanded perfectly smooth, again by methods the Indians never even dreamed of. Whether launching off into the East River, paddling through public parks, or embarking on long exhibitions, canoeing has become a staple of American outdoor activity. First explorer saw this country. Saw it just like us. In a canoe. I can imagine how they felt. Yet how did this come to be? The canoe, which many Americans consider it to be of European origin, is actually a vessel native to the North American landscape. The first bark canoes were used by indigenous nations all across the continent. So why are they considered to be European or even American? The answer stems from the 19th century, when white men sought to separate the indigenous canoe from its history and promote it as an American sport worthy of middle class time and use. Canoeing popularized in American culture during the late 19th century in what is now considered the canoe boom. Following the start of the Industrial Revolution, white men sought new forms of leisure and entertainment. Sporting culture established itself within American society. The rising middle class also sought ways to engage in sporting culture separate from the working class. Athletic clubs, with the goal of redefining masculinity, began popping up in every major American city. The New York City Canoe Club was the first of the new sporting clubs to promote the indigenous craft. Founded by William Alden, a member of the New York Times editorial board, the club's purpose was to create awareness for the new sport. However, as William Alden introduced the sport of canoeing, he was pushed to separate it from its history. Misinformation spread about indigenous Americans had created destructive myths regarding their existence, culture, and more distinctly, technology. A growing impression had emerged that indigenous technology was unsuitable for white usage. Following the common school movement of the 1820s, generations of Americans were purposefully taught a false history of indigenous peoples. School books produced during this period perpetuated the myth that indigenous peoples were less advanced in knowledge, arts, and civility. Specifically, James Fenimore Cooper's The Leather Stocking Tales became a critical influence on Americans' perceptions of indigenous people and culture. Following the life of Nathaniel Bumpo, a half-white, half-indigenous frontiersman, Cooper's tales became a center point of cultural reference and national understanding. The Deerslayer, in particular, focuses on a white prairie family's fight for survival on the frontier against the indigenous Hurons. Throughout the Deerslayer, Daniel Bumpo makes use of indigenous bark canoes, which are described primitively as the bark. This is in strict contrast to the white family's houseboat titled The Ark. The disparities between the two crafts in Cooper's writing embodies the stereotype that indigenous design was unsophisticated and unsuitable for white usage. The Leather Stocking Tales protagonist also represents the American imagination of a frontiersman, white and morally intelligent, but his strong wilderness skills were accredited to his indigenous background. I was never far from you, Hawkeye. How could you be? We are brothers. In this line of thought, Nathaniel Bumpo symbolizes the creation of an American identity grounded in native cultures and tradition. The myths and stereotypes perpetuated within the leather stocking tales is likely a factor that pushed William Alden to separate the canoe from its indigenous history. You sure you can trust that buck there? That buck happens to be a Mohican chieftain. Yeah. How do you make sure he behaves when we get to the fort? Old Tom Hutter hates engines worse than poison. William Alden worked to reimagine the canoe as a respectable boat worthy of middle-class attention, and he did so by rhetorically distancing the modern 
canoe from its indigenous past. In his Times article titled, Canoeing, Alden promotes the canoe as a middle-class yacht, and he employed the usage of boat makers to design a new American sailing canoe. The introduction of sailing canoes, often referred to as the whitening of the canoe, signifies the Americanizing of the indigenous craft. Within the first 15 years of the club's existence, it had been successful in its goal of reimagining the indigenous canoe, both in concept and design. The North American canoe stands to symbolize America's progressive narrative of Western civilization, yet it equally encapsulates the trauma of our national identity. The New York City Canoe Club sought to bring American athleticism to the indigenous canoe, and its attempt is representative of how destructive myths regarding indigenous people permeated all aspects of American life. As white America sought a national pastime, it pushed indigenous communities further into submission. A national identity based in indigenous culture was created as a justification for the traumas of our country.